Hi hey everyone, Stevie Heyer. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my uh, my army, Space Marines. Um, at first, I wanted to make you know orcs because I love painting their, their skin tones. You know, I use the the different shades. I base coat them mint's not green. Do a light dry brush on everything with a goblin green, and then do the top part. You know, where the sunshine would hit them with some dry brush of scorpion green so it stands out. Um, my webcam's kind of crappy so I just won't bear with me. Uh, I can't really zoom in and show you the detail like I would like to. Um, but hey, this was my first troop, my first group of uh, Space Marines that I ever bought. And I started painting them, you know, I painted them uh, kind of like the normal Space Marine like this, just the blue with the gold around the shoulder pads and stuff and I'm like hey I want to spice him up a little bit so I don't know if you can tell here but he's got like this white and uh, not white but uh it's like lines like kind of like makes his uh outfit stand out like like Tron you know all their uh I got all these guys are like that and then I thought about it you know after I, I got on uh, my salt on black I started painting the guys and I'm like you know what it seems like I'm just painting the same dude over and over again. I know regardless of how you paint, it feels like that. But for some reason with the, the orcs, I never really felt like I was painting the same dude over and over again. And it was because of the green skin tones. And I know you could probably do that with the blues and everything too. But I was like, I just love the green. And the greens, I loved it. So what I had done was I took one of these guys from this troop here that I had modified with the two guns painted them all up green. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but he's got the little highlights on top there with the scorpion green. And once I got done with all my Space Marines, I, I put the gloss coat on them, so I'm probably never going to touch painting them again. So, that brings me to my Assault on Black Reach, guys. Really wish I could zoom in on him. This is my favorite. My best job I have ever done on painting a, a miniature is this guy right here. And, uh. Yeah. And then I got the other. Other guys all. All set here. Ready to go. Ready for combat. Ready to kill them stinking orcs. Orcs. I love orcs, so. Flamer guys, Captain. Whoops, got this dude here. No. And I got my Terminators. I mean, you can probably tell. See how it's a little brighter. Your arms, you can see the, the tone difference there. We got it on the back of the legs here. Got another one, of course. You know, there's three more. I haven't finished yet. These three, I still gotta put their the highlight coats on. I haven't finished. Yet. Then you got, you know, come back to this guy, bro. I don't know if you can tell, but you know, I got some rust effects I put on there. It's hard to tell. Uh, I put blotches of uh, dark flesh down, and then. You know, in the center there, I put some chain mail. You know, you can use mithril silver, bullgun metal, whichever you know tone that you want. But I, you know, I like the, the chain mail look. And, uh, I think it turned out pretty good. You know, I got rust specks everywhere. Same with here. This is dark flesh to make that look rusty. But that brings me to my my, my pride and joy here, people. That I want to let y'all know about. Uh, I myself cannot afford to purchase the sixty dollars, forty-five dollar tanks, and I need them for my army. I know it's not, you know, legal in tournaments and all, but if you take some time, you can make a tank out of foam board, and you know we all know how inexpensive foam board is. And this was my very first attempt at making a tank. 
all this carving work here, this is just, I just took my X-Acto, carved all these lines out, you know, and uh, took a pen, uh, you know, just to, you know, take a pen, and after I cut the lines, I just threw everywhere. It widens the gap open a little bit, and then I painted everything up, and, uh, one coat of blue, you know, after I painted everything black, base coated black. And I put a coat of blue, and then I, I put some uh, a black wash over everything so that it would get into all the recesses a little better. And, uh, yeah, everything I hand carved, this whole thing, all the detail in it is just the exacto knife and a pen to, you know, open up the gaps. Carve that out there, the eagle. I'm going to probably end up taking this turn off and making a, a better one. Uh, after you see my, my new tank I made, uh, that I've been working on it for about a month, just taking my time on it and trying to make it look as, the way I want it to look. And this is what I came up with. Check that out. Check it out. Y'all see that? And this one's not flat. Oh, the door fell. This one is not flat like the other one. It has tracks, you can see. Some tracks. I just I literally took my X Acto knife and carved that out of the foam board. It's all half inch foam board that I work with. Uh, the guns, foam board, sandpaper, toothpick to make the holes. Uh, See my, you can see my rust effects here better on, on the tank here. And this one's not a flat surface. There's individual pieces that I carved out and glued onto it. Um, there's the, the plow, the center cannon. You can see that. You know, um, this thing's been through hell and back because it's all rusted up. You that. Underneath, you know, nothing special. The tracks, you know, my drought rushing. This is what I thought would look the best for it. Um, uh, let's see, give you a top view here of the turns that I put up there. The stuff I use, I use this plastic uh, mesh here that uh, crafters use for sewing carpets or whatnot. Took a piece out and put it in there. And now it looks like a metal grade. These pipes here are made out of just, uh, I had some extra wire because uh, I work with circuit boards and stuff. So I had some extra wire. I just bent it up and glued it on there and painted it up like so it looks like pipes. And I carved these round things out with the uh, foam board also. Center fans are just cardboard, uh, like cardboard backing, and then a calendar or whatever. Just cut them out, bent them up so they had their, all the blades on a little angle, and painted them up. And uh, so I'm probably gonna make the other turret more of this kind of style, you know, on the other tank. And then I got the rear hatch with the crane here. It moves via toothpick. And you move it up, the door comes down. I don't know if you guys can see in there. Uh, let's see, I got a flashlight, but see in that. If you can see in that bad boy, I, ooh, I carved a door back there. Nothing big. <laughs> Nothing big inside because I don't really plan on everyone checking out the inside interior of the tank. I just wanted to see if I could put a door on. And there you have it. Um, at the end of this video. Uh, I'm gonna put up another slide. I'm gonna put up a slideshow to go along with this video on this tank to show you uh, pictures of it. You know, when it was just in uh, the pink foam board phase, and then uh, after pics. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy. Um, if you would like me to show you, it would probably be a long video. Uh, if you want me to show you how I, I make the foam board tanks. Let me know. Uh, I'll try to come up with a how to video on that. And uh, stay tuned for my other video uh, that I'm going to do on a dungeon that I created out of this foam board. Uh, it would have been probably a lot easier if I had my Hearst Arts uh, 
molds by now, but I haven't saved up enough money to purchase them. So everything in this dungeon that's going to be coming up is, uh, you know, it's hand carved. Everything from the caskets to the doors, you know, to the, everything. The hilts holding up the, the, the torches. The flooring is all hand carved into the foam board. So I hope you enjoy the next video. That's what to look forward to. Thank you.